Good evening, everybody. Uh, 7 o'clock, so we're going to jump right in. Uh, we're going to open up an informal discussion tonight for zoning changes to URA, B, C, and design guidelines and layout. Uh, there was a little confusion at our last meeting uh, about uh, participation and so forth, but uh, tonight's discussion is, uh, as was last uh, meeting, it's just a discussion, an informal discussion. So jump right in if you have any comments or questions. Uh, we're not voting on anything. We're not making any decisions. We're just, we're just talking. Uh, this is a long process that we're knee deep in now. Uh, so again, if you have any comments, just raise your hand. I'll call on you. Just let me know uh, name and address. And uh, feel free to give and take. Uh, that being said, Carolyn, you want to we'll start with this and jump in? Yeah. Um so we talked last time about, um, uh, you know, focusing more on the design standards piece. And then I also brought an example, which I have again, um, of an ordinance um, layout that really focuses more on graphics and to explain the text. Um, and. Um, and I think, you know, we, we did talk a little bit more about um, wanting to have graphic representation of some of the design standards to make it clear um, what the goals were. And I got from, gather from the last discussion that um, you wanted to scale back on the numbers per se, but have more of the concepts and then flesh out some of the reasoning behind the design concepts. Uh, so I started to take a crack at that in terms of incorporating both your comments about sort of erasing the one, I know one of them was the um, percentage of, of um, porch and, the, de and the, num yeah. the figure about the depth and just sort of have covered entries and that kind of thing. So um, I went and luckily we had, we were able to, we can mock up those graphics ourselves. We don't have to send them back to Q Riddle to, to redo. So, and we had talked to them about doing that anyway, about having something that could be um, uh, flexible through time even. So if five years hence we want to make some tweaks on it, it wasn't frozen, we'd have to go back to them and contract. So um, I went back and did that and then also started to um, um, bring in, incorporate some more pictures and graphics based on the conversations we were having. And I actually printed out a couple of uh, unfortunately, I forgot to do double sided, so I'm just going to pass these around. This is the first page of what, you know, this is a very, very crazy rough mock up of sort of starting to. I just wanted to do it for one district to see how much energy it would take and what we could do. So it's definitely not complete, but it's just sort of that initial section mm -hmm. about, and, and there's a page two, which I hope printed out, but maybe it's not there. It actually has the. Gosh, I wonder if the printer just stopped after that. I guess it did, because there's no page two there. Is there? Is it just one thing? No. Yeah. Okay. But it should do we want to share with the yeah. public? What's that? Yeah. It's just so then the the bulk of it obviously is the lot size, but it's really the same. Where on the left hand column you have the standard, but the idea is the right hand column is the graphic representation of what that standard is. And um, I'm totally a novice at SketchUp, so some of these things on the right are little baby steps. But we're, we know we have a couple of good interns in the office that know SketchUp <laughs> really well. So um, we're hoping that we can just sort of give this to them and then they can take it and make it really look presentable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but so that's the idea, but then sort of going back and, and um, so the idea would be to emphasize more of neighborhood characteristic and form um, because that's been an important concept that you guys have been hearing about and and, um, and so incorporate all the cute little graphics but then add some of that to really flesh out what what it means to have build out on a lot and what it means to have build out with additional parking and um, uh, so there's not, I mean, I, I don't know how much more you want to go into discussion of design or the concept. I guess, you know, clearly there's some 
folks who are very concerned you got the letter in November or early December probably and then I forwarded it to you again last week from Ward 3 about wanting to scale back the zoning because and so I think you know um, and but at the same time we've heard from people who are very interested in doing individual projects and feel like they're um, you know, hemmed in by the current zoning that's not reflective of the existing neighborhood context. Um, and um, so it's obviously important to keep the conversation going and the momentum going, but, you know, from our perspective, I think I heard from you guys last time that you'd rather get it right and have things laid out and make and have a conversation about um, all of it in the context rather than just trying to keep it going for the momentum's sake. So we're hoping, we would like to do this, you know, in a relatively short time, but at the same time, I think it's an important piece, you know, to, to work on. So it's probably gonna take us internally a few more weeks to really get it all together and get the all interns right. going and all that stuff. Um, Is it the intent to have a, a graphical representation of, of each? You know, we went through the, through the charts. Yeah. And the, um, the wording for, for any change that was made we reviewed that wording and either agreed or changed it or whatever mm -hmm. is, it, is it the intent to have a, a graphic next to every one of those or every third one or a group yeah them together I or? think the idea what we're thinking is have the bulk of the representation um, as it relates to lot size layout parking and those kinds of things that relate to the design characteristics and then have a separate page that would just be here are all the uses allowed by right and then here are the uses that require special permit mm -hmm. and so that no we wouldn't have graphic representation necessarily of each one but we just sort of simplify it and make it have you know the bulk of the design piece with the lot dimension standard sort of in one place and then you have a separate listing of what's allowed so you know, this pr it says, this is a, and also a description of the zone. So for URB, it's primarily a residential district, but then you go to this one page that by special permit, you can do funeral homes or, you know, I don't know, what, whatever else there are allowed to be by special permit in URB, and the same for A and C. Um, but, and, and then in C, obviously, it's primarily residential with some modest amounts of mixed use by special permit for commercial. Um, uses. Um, so, for example, the, at the first front page for each district, you have it would be standard for each one: layout, lot size, parking. Yeah. And then you turn the page, and you get into more detail. So, the more you dig in, the more detail you yeah. get. But up front, you have a quick representation of what we're talking about for each district. Yeah. 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 Do you have a statement that indicates what the nature of that district is? Well, I think that's in the, the goal. beginning in the, of so it. So this first yes. page on the left, the first column was, you know, the first cut at mm -hmm. trying to get to that. This is primarily a residential district where single family, two and three family units are allowed. And then for A, it would be, prim, um, you know, primarily residential where single family homes are allowed and, you know, um, not multifamily. Um, and then for C, you know, allowance of some mixed use, et cetera. And is there any attempt to relate this, or do you think there's any point in any attempt to relate this to the sustainable Northampton? Um, yeah, I mean, I think, well, it's gonna be within the zoning context, so I think the, oh, I think maybe, um, you know, the other piece of it is to say, you know, B and C or neighborhoods around the core um, commercial areas with walking distance it's or something. That's why like you're that. doing it. Right. But I think that's sort of a precursor in the ordinance package as opposed to in the zoning. So maybe an explanation um, in the, the statement that goes to City Council. Um, I think maybe ultimately at the beginning of the whole zoning ordinance, it might be good to have that once we, you know, maybe are 50% way <laughs> through. Right. Um, but it seems way. to me that there's, if you're looking to sustain the reasons for making these changes, this is what's being used and it ought to be connected. It's not like you don't know now, but when someone picks it up at some 
further point, mm -hmm. that's that's why they are being laid out the particular way in which they're being laid out. Yeah. <coughs> These particular yeah. guidelines came out of one of the meetings that you had with the Ward 3 Association and was designed in some ways to address some of the concerns that came out of that? Is that accurate? Well, there, were, there was one, at the parking one in particular. We mm -hmm. already had, the, you guys had discussed the other elements, I think, going forward, you know, from the begin, from the outset because there was a lot of, and, and that came out of the Zoning Revisions Committee process, actually, the right. other ones. Right, um, which really did focus, actually, on, as I recall, the idea that Ward 3, which is a neighborhood that people love, could not be built today, so right. they wanted to conform the zoning to what we it like. Existed. Right. Yeah, right. that's where that was the sort of right. origins of this whole process. Right. And so the one additional one that I think, you know, was, was a great addition was um, the piece about, yeah, parking does have a big impact, and we need to really have a standard in there to address if you're adding units and therefore adding parking, we have to deal with that impact to a neighborhood. <coughs> Janet Gross, 38 Round Hill Road. It's my understanding from the meetings back in October that um, URA zoning would not change. Is that the case? URA zoning would not change? Mm -hmm. Well, the, um, the map, the geographic area of URA is not currently um, being discussed to adjust the boundaries. But the zone itself, the dimensional requirements, um, are part of this package to change. So they will experience some change as well as the other? The right, lots, lot size, frontage, um, primarily are the, are the things that would change in URA. So I'm sorry I don't have more of those changes to give you to look at, but I just wanted to give you a sense of sort of where we were going. I really like the, the photos I find are, oh, because I'm not, that's how I see things, like the photos of the actual houses I think is really helpful because we've had discussion, I think Devin in particular has expressed concerns that we're not too controlling about design guidelines, that we don't right. want to stop modern houses like the one we talked about, Wood, Woodmont, Woodmont, and everyone. Um, so I like that. I like that it shows the, the different, you know, that we're not, becoming a you know a Nantucket in that way but we're really we're trying to control for other things not for the actual architecture yeah. okay. so Karen, <coughs> these tables that we have nursed along are it's still going to be the core at the back of yeah. the package yeah yeah they'll be in here but in a different layout and so the idea is really by offering here it, I hate to bring up a legal question but because I'm not a lawyer, but the, there are no lawyers. Yeah, exactly. Anymore. And those are the only people that raise good questions. But um, <laughs> the the idea that you're starting with something that's conceptual and more general, but then gets I mean, this is this is very actionable. I mean, a, a builder knows what they can do, and it's it's almost rule based. Mm -hmm. Yeah, are that's these, in here too. Well, and where I'm going are. are are these going to open us up for an argument about, well, but I can meet these numbers, but I don't look like that? You know, I mean, I, I'm just wondering, are the, is the imagery going to give us any trouble? I, I actually really like it. Well, <clears throat> um, I know, I think I heard you all say last time in, in this example, there were, it went sort of from a flat 2D surface to then some architectural thing and you said stay away from that keep it really basic mm -hmm. and that's the goal this all, a thing was really trying to figure out because um, people have problems with zero lot line like what does that mean mm -hmm. so that's the only one where I built up a structure but I could certainly do a flat roof <laughs> that makes a difference um, and that's really more to show you could have two houses right next to each other and that's a zero lot line and that's really rep supposed to be representational as opposed to design yeah. and which it was why I didn't think that we need to or you know put any ornamentation on <laughs> yeah no I'm I'm actually just grappling with what you know what might we try to think about now yeah no, I think if we have pictures of things, 
that are acceptable, it doesn't mean that things that don't look like that aren't acceptable. Right. Uh, there are examples. Of, of, you've got people numbers. can come in with designs and, and that aren't on there that would be perfectly acceptable. And obviously, there's going to be a matter of judgment on that, I guess. But yeah. I agree. I mean, I think it says, you know, example structures, and it, there's a, a, a range there. They're not all the same, um, as Jen mentioned. And then under the building design standards, it's, it's very clear. It's, it's just referencing on the left, it gives the numbers, and on the right, it's a re representation of those numbers. So I don't think it, I don't it's think it's not it wishy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> So you're just going to let the interns loose and have them have yeah. at it for a couple of weeks? And yeah. Okay. yeah. It seems to me that what we should be worrying about is not the graphical representation, which is great, desirable, we have to do it. But the core is in the numbers right. and the figures here, and this is what we should be figuring out. Which is what we've been That's focusing we've been on. Yeah. Doing. And I think and we should keep focusing on As long on. as the graphics accurately represent what we've been nursing along for 18 months, then and we're good. <coughs> so number-wise, in terms of this stuff, is there more to be done? Um, Since I came in in the yeah. middle of all this. No, I felt like you all were pretty comfortable with where we were after going back through, mm -hmm. um, through those numbers. So you think you're through with this step, and right. that's, so now it's the, and then having gotten those together, you may look at it and right. want to make right. So I plan that you guys will, will certainly want to look at it again before it gets formally introduced, of course. But um, I think that I felt that I heard from you all that we want to move ahead with this right. and, and really sort of. And then, of course, you know, during the public hearing processes, there will be lots of involvement for you all to participate in other groups to participate participating all the people who came to the original public forums to come back and all of that. So, so we've had the, the, the chart and that's generated discussion along the way, but collectively we felt pretty good with where that was. Knowing that it's not done, there's more discussion to be had, but we felt pretty good. Now we're, we've kind of putting that off to the side, doing the graphical representation, trying to marry those two together, then we'll bring it back out again as a complete package. Yeah. And have that discussion one last time. Okay. Modify, change, whatever, <coughs> and then try to move it forward. Yeah. Okay. Sound like a plan? Um, I think there was all just to make sure that um, folks are satisfied that we covered. I think there was some a comment or concern that there hadn't been um, at least people weren't sure that the board had talked or seen the memo from Ward 3, so. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, and I had thought actually based on our last conversation today that there would be Ward 3 folks here who wanted right. to speak to this, and I feel like we actually did this to allow for that because right. of the, you know, the, the follow up today, but I'm not. <coughs> okay. Any other questions? Yep. I, you know, I'd like to speak to that. You want to come up? The, the you got to come, come up. up. Come on up. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Uh, Jim Nash, 18 Montfield. Um, that that we we're we're doing um, some back and forth around when the public are encouraged to speak and when they're not. The agenda tonight did represent that a discussion was going to occur, but public comment was not part of the agenda. I, I hear, you know, I hear that it's, you know, it's, we're opening it up now, and I'm confused about how this committee works, that, um, that there's times where uh, what you guys are deliberating, and that what gets said here needs to be controlled, and then, and, and I, I respect that, um, and so, when the agenda doesn't reflect when the public can speak, the public is confused as to how they interact. So, well, the, the planning board's not like city council where there's public comment. If when there's a hearing, say for 
8.30 on a particular subject. We don't have public comment at 7 o'clock when the meeting opens for a hearing that we haven't heard yet because that might influence the discussion. And somebody might come up at 7 o'clock, say their piece, and then leave and not be part of the discussion an hour and a half later. So there's give and take during when the hearing comes up, and we'll take public <coughs> input then. But when there's a hearing, we don't take public comment at the beginning. Tonight and, and last uh, meeting was just an open discussion. It's not a hearing. It's just a, tonight, it's just a discussion back and forth. And it's the public can jump in at any time. So there was some confusion last week about waiting for a public comment period that was never going to be there. Um, because it was just an open discussion, it was there by default. So we apologize for that you know, inception, but we operate way, differently I, I, than the council. You know, last week, I, you know, I didn't feel good about it either. You know, and that, and and that, um, you know, that it it it's. I get confused. I am confused about how to interact. I've been on other committees, and there's public comment at the beginning of the meeting and that often people can be involved throughout the meeting. Mm -hmm. But with your status, because of the quasi-judicial matters that you deal with, right. how we interact really needs to be a lot clearer. And that, um, so, you know, therefore, if, you know, having it, there's going to be a discussion, and then public comment is going to be sought, you know, to have that on, you know, the agenda would be great. Because then I send out an email to people saying, the planning board wants to hear what you have to say, you know, and I so. could just say, though, I mean, it's not officially stated in the agenda, but there has never been, and I've been on the board now for too many years to even remember, there has never been an occasion that the public has not been able to speak as long as there's not a legal reason why they can't, ever. So even if it's not stated on the agenda that there will be, that we're inviting the public to speak, the public is always invited to speak. And even last week, even with all the confusion, the public spoke, um, and, and, and Mark called upon the public. So that's, I, it has never yeah, been I, but different. I, I think if, there, there, if we can just be more formal about it, we can avoid all of the discomfort. I mean, I was so uncomfortable last week. I was like, what do I, what do, I do? And, and I, you know, after, after speaking, you know, I left here and I was like, oh, God, they're all going to be upset. <laughs> and I, 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 and I, I don't, you know. I don't, I don't think any of us want that. So um, I, I'm just saying if we can just be more formal about here's the, the agenda, a discussion will occur, and public input will be sought, then people will know I want to go to that meeting, and I'm, people are going to listen to what I say. I have sat in, I, there were meetings with the ZRC where, um, where you know, we just said, you know what, we're not going to, Listen, we don't want the public involved in our discussion tonight because we're doing work. So that's what I felt you guys were doing with this internal discussion right here. But the public was here to witness it. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's why I was here tonight. So okay. I'm sorry I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, maybe we can be clear on, on, on when we set up the agenda. <clears throat> Nothing was intended. Uh, I know. I, I, I get it. Right. We, you know, we just operate like differently, and that's all right. <laughs> okay. So, thank, thank you. you. Anybody else have issues about uh, or comments about the issues that we're talking about right now? No. Yep. I guess I don't really have any prepared. Uh, Alex Diesel, in One Sixty Four Riverside Drive, long-term member of the uh, Bay State Village Association, and we've been very involved in sustainable Northampton. Uh, in the spring of 2010, we did extensive um, outreach. We did a visioning for the future of Bay State. We distributed about 400 uh, questionnaires, fairly extensive, uh, asking people what they liked about the neighborhood, uh, what they saw in the future, what changes they'd like to make. And uh, we got about mm, 75 uh, responses, which I thought was really good. Um, representation of the neighborhood. For those of you who may be not familiar with Bay State, it's the area in the crook of the Mill River, runs Riverside Drive from the high school to uh, old Pro Brush buildings, uh, all those little roads off there. It's very, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty uh, congruent 
land area. And um, in general, I'd, I'd urge you, if you haven't, take a look at the um, results of that. It's on our website. Um, uh, the, I could, uh, briefly, there was, there was quite a bit of, of uh, support for um, home businesses, home occupations, support for uh, commercial, mixed use. Uh, there was some, uh, there was support for uh, being able to expand existing buildings to and perhaps three families that didn't necessarily meet the um, current uh, dimensional requirements. But there was very little support for uh, any significant reduction uh, in, the, in the dimensional requirements. Um, that being said, we were well represented on the Zoning Revisions Commission. Peter McLean, longtime president of the Bay State uh, Village Association, along with uh, Jim, were members of that. And the compromises that they worked out, I, uh, I'm pretty much willing, I think people are willing to go along with. We also had, uh, for information, we had a forum on zoning that Carolyn did a great presentation at the Little Theater a couple of weeks ago about 30 people. Again, there was some, uh, it was, you know, it's very hard to, uh, to get a, a, a good, uh, to, to sp I, I'm not gonna speak for what the, that group of people said. Again, I didn't hear uh, a great deal of, uh, of support for significant uh, infill into the neighborhood. It's uh, almost all of the houses down there were built uh, probably before 19, <coughs> 70, many of them uh, built in the, in, in the late 1800s. Um, nevertheless, the compromise that they worked <coughs> out, the 60-foot frontage, is something I like the Ward 3 Association. I think it's something that, uh, you know, understand that zoning isn't freeze things, that it can never really uh, freeze the present forever. Um, but the uh, planning board's recommendation that it go to 50 feet seems to me arbitrary, uh, as the planning department thinks 60 feet is arbitrary. But 60 feet uh, was, a, was something that a group of, of people worked out over however long that one, 18 months, <coughs> two years for the Zoning Revisions Committee? No? Whatever, long yeah, time, yeah. it seemed like long anyway. Uh, and uh, it's part of, uh, so again, I would, I would uh, ask you to to give considerable weight to the recommendations of, of the committee that you guys appointed, after all, to do this. Um, I guess I have nothing. I, the only other, uh, sort of a long time, the last time there were a major round of dimensional changes, the URB and URC uh, were, accepted them and voted for them and, and have lived with them. The URA uh, were able to exempt themselves from that uh, halfway in, in that process and left kind of a bad taste, I think, in the mouth of, uh, of a lot of us. It didn't seem <clears throat> that we were all in the same boat, that we were all in the same sustainable package. After all, large parts of the URA are closer to downtown than <clears throat> Bay State. Bay State's an, a good 40-minute walk uh, to the center of Northampton, 25 minutes from most of it to downtown Florence. It's marginally walkable. It's not walkable today. Uh, there's no public transportation. There's no likelihood of public transportation. Uh, so, you know, yes, we are definitely for a sustainable community, uh, but it has to be rational. Has to be, you know, has, has to make sense. So uh, that being said, I'm, you know, we're going to be lots of opportunities to hear, and you'll hear more from us. The zoning forum is also on NCTV, if you're interested in looking at that. It's about an hour and a half. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else from the board? Well, I like the idea that everything has to make sense. It's a revolution in politics. All right. I mean, that's what all this is about, working on the, you know, the chart is just, 
it was flawed, it wasn't user friendly, and that's what this is all about, is trying to make something that makes sense, that's usable, that's functional, that's applicable, and that's certainly more user friendly than, than what we've had in the past. So. Yes? Yeah, I guess I worry about phrases like that. Um, you know, user friendly, applicable, uh, makes sense. Uh, because what I see happening is these broad brush strokes attempting to simplify everything. And yet I wonder if you've given serious consideration to some of the consequences of this kind of methodology. Um, I mean, things like this tend to bite back. I mean, what you're doing is sort of in the spirit of high modernism. Um, some areas are already in a postmodern world. But, um, you know, just from my perspective, living on Round Hill Road, I don't understand why we are in URC. Uh, this is not an area that people can easily walk back up the hill from being downtown. And, um, you know, the consequences that I am concerned about are consequences to the older houses in Northampton. You know, have you really thought about what this will do? I don't know if any of you are architects or landscape architects, uh, but when you come up with these design standards, <coughs> are you thinking about more than just numbers? Are you thinking, for example, can you stand in a neighborhood and look up and see the sky? or trees, or will you only see rooftops? Um, I foresee many areas trying to become historic districts, um, even though we should not um, you know, be a mausoleum and protect and try to preserve everything. Um, there are some buildings that really do need to be protected, neighborhoods that need to be protected. And I'm just concerned that um, in doing these standards, you don't have someone who is um, questioning and saying, well, what are the consequences? But just going ahead. I do agree that in making the rationale for what you're doing, you do have to make it stronger. How is this related to sustainable Northampton? Um, I don't think you've really made the case. I mean, as I see it, and, and if you recall back in those meetings in October, there was an emphasis on affordable housing, which seems to have vanished. Um, but it's all about, you know, filling in those cadastral maps and getting as much revenue as possible. I mean, you have not persuaded me that anything else is going on. So I do ask you to um, be aware of unintended consequences. They are out there, and they will bite you. Thank you. Thank you. OK, we're good. So for the next meeting relative to this, <coughs> there will be something. <coughs> Not a long time to put yeah. something. I can't guarantee anything. But I, I mean, my goal is to keep pushing, push a little bit more, a little bit more. And now that when we, we people are back from their Christmas holiday, so oh, <laughs> we I have the ability. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, we have students again, so okay. yeah. It should right. move relatively smoothly, I hope. Okay. And then that said, moving forward, next up is the Pulaski Park. Yep. So I think I sent you that, right? The standard. Mm -hmm. So for you and Deb and jump in if you want to provide any more information. But um, basically, uh, Department of Public Works and Board of Public Works has submitted a preliminary application to the Community Preservation Committee to seek funding t for um, detailed design um, for the reconstruction um, redesign, reuse of Pulaski Park um, to help the park. <laughs> and now, I mean, a lot of it, so uh, just going back um, 
um, briefly in history back in 2009, I guess his memo is dated actually even earlier, 2007, 2008, there had been a committee, one committee established by Board of Public Works to, um, with lots of public input on what things um, people were interested in seeing take place in Pulaski Park. How could Pulaski Park be enhanced? How could it be improved um, for the future? And so um, they did all this work. They finally, they ended up hire, um, they did a design competition and this um, firm, st um, Steve Simpson, Stephen Simpson Associates won the design competition and then everything sort of stopped because there was no funding. So there was a little bit of feedback I think after that, um, but there was no funding and then at the time Community Preservation Act didn't allow for um, those monies to be used to um, renovate or put into any um, park that was not originally purchased by CP um, C or CPA funds and then that legislation just changed last year so that now the CPA funds can be used for acquisition or it can also be used for uh, maintenance um, and upgrades to existing facilities that weren't previously purchased through the <coughs> process so now there's this uh, there's this new revenue mechanism by which the city can move forward on implementing the design, redesign, and reconstruction and enhancements to Pulaski Park. That in context of the hotel that, yeah. what, that didn't, that was what had us doing, thinking about this, wasn't it? Have I put those two together correctly? Yeah, um, so there's a hotel project and then as part of the hotel, um, the hotel and the city were having conversations about how to <coughs> meet park to hotel and there was going to be an additional park space added essentially when the hotel was built 30 <coughs> feet or something the park was going to extend <coughs> and so it was um, going to extend because the hotel people <coughs> were going to buy property and, and permit it to extend um, because of the gap essentially between the edge of the steep hill and where the building would go in order to you know make those two pieces and come whose together. property is that well, city well it was it's all city property oh, city property okay. city had um, yes um, accepted an offer by the hotel to purchase the property for the purposes of building the hotel mm -hmm. so then that um, through that discussion then generated the whole conversation about what to do with the rest of the park mm -hmm. and um, <clears throat> and so then there was this process that started sort of partway through the permitting process for the hotel. Um, and that's dead. The hotel is oh, dead. Yeah. But ultimately, <laughs> you know, the city council might bring up um, the sale of, of that, uh, you know, parking lot lot again. They just haven't really come to terms with it yet. And we're in our first season of the rewritten CPA statute. Um, so, Board of Public Works is, as part of its application, wants, um, would like to get letters of support from as many public bodies and private bodies for that matter um, for their application. And I think it, you know, I had a conversation with Jim um, uh, Larilla at DPW about how it made sense, I think, for Planning Board to weigh in and Central Business Architecture Committee. Um, and particularly as it relates to, you know, you guys have been looking more at the infrastructure and the street, um, um, sort of safer street standards for Main Street and then City Hall in front of City Hall and that piece. And I think the park has always sort of been this um, other aspect of the entire downtown, mm -hmm. you know, streetscape that hasn't really been addressed. So I think, um, you know, I would think that that may would make sense for you to comment or at least you know if you guys are willing or interested in writing a letter of support or signing on to a letter of support and, the, and what would the letter what would we be supporting just a continuation of the process that that started and <coughs> can I see those plans oh yeah <clears throat> um, yeah so basically you would be support it would be a letter of support for 
the city to move forward on renovation of Pulaski Park. And so they're... For the winning design or... Yeah, or? the winning design is the one that's going to move forward. They just need to go to... So basically they've had this all this public process that went into selecting the design team based on this design competition and then it stopped because there was no money to take it the next step so now this is the next step they didn't just select the design they didn't select the design team based on well they select the design team based on the design that was submitted yes but the design that submitted is the one that's going to go forward yes. that's not going to right they will start they're not going to start over with with you know they talk about these you know seven or eight or ten you know talking points about what's important is that all going to be thrown back into the mix and 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 the architect is going to come out with a new design that i don't think my sense is it's not going to be substantially di different so they're going to take after the design team was selected there was another round of comments and this memo that i also emailed to you of march 2009 mm -hmm. was basically the recommendations after the design team was selected about further consideration so there'll be some more stuff that gets put into the construction design but ultimately it's this team and it's their concept that one that they're going to move forward on a more detailed design and they're going after a grant for it are they going after a grant for the whole thing or are they doing it incrementally well I think they're this is just design so it's not I don't think it's construction uh -huh. as far as I know let me just check um, the email well and one more recent thing that has happened is the fatality in the crosswalk coming from the park mm -hmm. and I'm uh, you know there's been so much conversation about that but we currently have a sidewalk that goes to the crosswalk and mm -hmm. there's a big debate in town as to whether the crosswalk needs to come out but but then would you just still have people going down that sidewalk and getting into it? so I think there's a whole traffic piece of this that's gonna mm -hmm. that that has come up since this happened and the more use yeah. is made of the park the more mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. there's going to have to be some changes because this was based on having a hotel behind it that's a big that's a massive change right yeah. and it shows that the circulation you know Mm -hmm. shows dumping out onto South Street. Right. So I think actually the one thing would be how do you make a connection to the bike path in the back? But I think there's also has to be an assumption that there could be a building there at some point. Right. So they want to mm -hmm. design with that in mind. Sure. Yeah. When, when the discussion about the <clears throat> redoing Pulaski Park was going on the past few years, I've been quite concerned as, as a former downtown resident and as a former downtown businessman about the emphasis on performance centers i mean it seemed like people wanted a place that they want they show movies and they have bands there are hundreds and hundreds of families that live within 300 feet of Pulaski park and many was the time when they had a rock band there it actually made stores on upper main street unable to carry on business because it was so noisy so um i, I mean i don't I don't like that aspect of the uh, of the park. Well, and perversely, you wouldn't think so, but I can hear the bands at my house up, right. up in the other direction from town just because it's lower downtown right. heading up. But we're not here to parse the design, right? We're asked <coughs> right. to support the application right. for right. to CPA. Right. And right. presumably they've heard comments of that sort as part of the whole public input and they were going to continue. It's still going to be a public process. Mm -hmm. This right. letter request for letter of support is will the planning board support us in our application <coughs> funding to move forward mm -hmm. to do something in this mm -hmm. very public space. So do you need a recommendation from the board just to Yeah, I mean, I'll take or? a vote, I guess, and just say, you know, if someone wants to move to um, to have, maybe you would ultimately, Mark, you could sign ultimately a letter of support for funding. That's At Housing Partnership, that's how we do it, because the, the housing projects always come before us and ask for our support, so that's what oh, yeah. we do. Yeah. Yeah. Does anyone have an issue with supporting moving this forward? I'll make the motion that we support the. Okay. Okay. I decide what would be an effective thing for me to do. You want to leave it as a dog? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> right. This is the only opportunity yeah. we're going to have to make Pulaski Park a usable park, I, as far as I can tell, in, in the near future. In the right. well, Realistic. probably not right. so near future. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, this is not. We're not here to decide the details of what it looks like or how it's going to be or anything. Right. We're supporting right. them moving forward on doing something with it, fixing right. it. Right. Yeah. 
So unless unless like you that. don't think they so unless you love it just the way it is now like the way it is yeah, now well, better than the way it was before way back when awesome so your standard is bottom <laughs> I, mean, I think there. parks are a place for quiet relaxation itself <laughs> that's right by yeah by statute <laughs> so we have a motion and a second all in favor opposed Doesn't even make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, I think about if I say it's a waste of uh, CPC money, that's not what I voted for CPA for. How's that? Awesome. You can tell Dad. <laughs> tell. <laughs> not now. Right, right. Not now. <laughs> so we have minutes to approve, but we don't have any minutes tonight. So uh, <laughs> we'll push that off. So, so yeah. approved. Right. So those are approved. <laughs> And other, unless you have something um, else to show. No, no. This could be a record for you. Mike. It's no. not, not for me. But for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it will. I'll wait till Wayne comes. <laughs> yeah, but we have to sit around for like an hour and wait for Wayne. No, no, no. <laughs> he suggested we could talk about changes to uh, merging GI and OI, and we chatted about it a little while, and it, we realized that it would probably take a little bit more discussion than. Just a simple. Not coming tonight, no. <laughs> <laughs> Merging what, if you don't mind? I'm sorry. General industrial zone with office industrial. They're very similar, but um, office industrial doesn't allow warehousing mm -hmm. type of mm -hmm. uses. Mm -hmm. um, so, no, that will probably not be Move we adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Approve of that. Wow. Part. 7.45, how's that? That's a miracle. <laughs>